That's what we do when we establish priorities. We put the things that should be in first place in their proper order. So put Jesus first. To put him first, we need to follow him. There is a benefit to following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, when we put him first, when we follow his instructions, where we go where he calls us to go and do what he instructs us to do, there's a benefit. He offers more than you can currently hold and a way for you to learn how to hold even more. If we're going to put Jesus first in our lives, we have to love him. We've got to love him. Luke chapter 10 verse 27, it says these words. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. Your love mustn't be mechanical. Your love cannot be religious. When we says love the Lord your God, love it must come from your heart. It must be real. See, here's the thing. Don't grow distant from Jesus. All of us have friends. All of us have people that, that time and life has kind of gotten in the way and, and things have grown distant, maybe literally distant or, or, or maybe just emotionally. Or, or, but don't grow distant from Jesus. Don't grow distant from Jesus. You've got to seek Him. He wants to be part of everything in your life. You've got to seek Him. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and, and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Proverbs 8 17. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Hebrews 11 6 says, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What does this mean? This means that we've got to make every opportunity possible to seek the Lord. See, if we're going to put Jesus first, it means we have to follow him. We've got to go where he goes. We've got to do what he calls us to do. That means following instruction. We've got to put his word first. John chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. If you drop down to verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and he beheld his glory the glory as as of the only begotten of the father in other words jesus is the word that when we put jesus first we're putting the word first and what does that mean it means that the word becomes my final authority it, it becomes the authority that i that i live up to i will i'll be under this authority i'm going to be under this word in other words it's my final authority on to what it says about how I treat my wife. It's my final authority on how I treat my neighbor. It's my final authority on how I do business. It's my final authority on how I give and how I serve and how I love my children, raise my children. It's my final authority on how I deal with money. It's my final authority on how I treat my enemies. That if we want a revolution to happen in our lives that brings change, His Word has to be my final authority. I will live according to the Word. And this is the thing. The Word, the Bible says, is a, is a light to my path. In other words, it illuminates my future. When you put Jesus first, it means to share Him with others. When you put your faith in Him, it means to share that faith. Putting Jesus first means taking the step to make sure that you are all in. Putting Jesus first means putting your faith in Jesus. Jesus came and he died for our sin. He died for our shame. He took our, our sickness upon himself and he broke the separation between man and God that now whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. It's the Jesus revolution. Put Jesus first. When you wake up in the morning, put him first. When you're tired, put him first. 
when you've got so much going on and it's so busy and there's so much to do, put him first. The reality is that you can make it without the things that are stressing you out. But you can't make it without Jesus. You've got to put Jesus first. Before your job, before your desires, before your dreams, put him first. Put him first in your schedule. Then put him first in your finances. Put him first. Jesus will be first one way or the other. The Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That means he is first. Everybody's going to acknowledge it one way or another. So why not put him first today? All authorities across the entire universe have to bow to Jesus Christ. And as people fall into the ash heap of human history, so-called greats, Jesus Christ stands alone, unrivaled, unparalleled. He is supreme and he is our purpose. He is our purpose. All things were created through him and for him. Put Jesus first. Because I, I've come to tell you that when you put Jesus first, he is able to do a sudden and he is able to do a radical and a complete change. When you put Jesus first, he's able to affect a fundamental change in your life. He's able to overthrow certain powers that rule the decisions and in our, in our, in our ways of thinking and our direction. When we put Jesus first. You know how we know what our priorities are? What do you put your time into? If you don't have time to spend with Jesus, I'm talking regularly, I'm not talking occasionally. I'm talking regularly. And you don't give him leftovers, you give him the best. Spend time with God. Put him first in everything that you do. And you know what, some of the upside down things in your life will turn right side up. A lot quicker than you think they will. Man does not live by bread alone. So by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Too many times we say these phrases, we say, Lord, I will make time. No, we cannot make time. Or we say, Lord, I will, I will fit you in. No, we will not fit him in. Let me say this. Instead of trying to fit him in or make time for him, why don't we give our time to him? You see, there's a shift of thinking right there because either you hold on to time and you fit him in or you say, Lord, this is all my time of the day, 24 hours, I give to you. That wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, Lord, you're going to make a way. That it doesn't matter if it's in the car or if it's in the bathroom or in the shower. Lord, I give my 24 hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I give it to you. Because this, this is what I know, that Jesus said that if we seek Him, He will be near. That when we seek Him, we will find Him. That when we seek Him, He will reward us. That when we seek Him, He will add all these things for us. When we seek Him. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. In case you've forgotten this, let me just remind you that you don't have to seek things and neither do I. We seek God and He adds the things. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. You have to open up your heart and ask Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. In other words, Jesus Christ has to be received. He's not going to push his way into your life. You're not going to just change into, into, into a Christian. No, you have to receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Just because you're in church doesn't mean you're a Christian. But let me say this. Sometimes we receive Him, but just a part of our lives. 
Jesus wants to take every part of your life. We have to say, Lord, you are the minister of everything. Lord, if your kingdom comes, it must control every part of my life. And you would admit that even though you love Jesus, you haven't really been putting him first lately. There have been some other things that have been crowding ahead of Jesus in your life. He's been on your to-do list, but seems to get pushed further and further down, depending on what else is happening in your life. And for you, it's time to take Jesus off of the to-do list and make him the center of your life. It's time to put Jesus first. God wants to be part of our lives in every way. He cannot be a once a week commitment. He cannot be a tick box that we tick. He cannot be on the to-do list. Jesus is not just a religion. He's not just a symbol. He's not just a story or a subject. He is a living God who desires real relationship with his people. And he desires to be part of everything that goes on in your life. The things that matter most need to go first. And if you're putting Jesus first, then he's got to be at the center. Put Jesus first in your life and everything else will fall into place. When you are our highest priority, all of the other priorities will be taken care of. Because through you, we have life. Lord, through you, we have freedom from sin. Through you, oh God, your purpose for our life and why you made us, why we even exist can come to pass. And you need to make a commitment today to put Jesus first, to put Jesus first, to follow him.